I think when I set out to begin this project, I had no idea what I wanted to say. I was curious because for me, I'm, I'm not Turkish and I'm not Armenian, so you just you, you step into this and you want to, as a photographer, as a visual person, I wanted to see and sort things in my own mind for my own comprehension. And of course, at the end, after working on it for seven years, then yes, I, I want to share what I found. And I think I found that at, really at, at that um, human level, there is this beautiful remembrance that is happening. Doing this project on this level, and I feel like I'm, you know, talking to people and getting their stories and doing it on a kind of um, what I found to be the dialogue between. The genocide, but we're going to talk about it also at this human level. And I feel like this was maybe a way to go into and take a, the back door in, instead of start at the controversy, and it's blocked immediately, and we can't talk about it anymore. And just enter it in, into a way that we can start talking about what's really at. Garbaker, the Serp Girgos church that was um, renovated actually a few years ago. But when I went there for the first couple times, it was in ruins. I had been there, I was going through the church and I had photographed it from every angle and these kids were playing and there were sheep running everywhere. I was about to leave. I was actually walking out and the children that had been playing and then following us all of a sudden realized I was leaving and they just started playing by themselves. And there's one staircase that goes up the side of the church had fallen apart from the bottom, from the middle to the bottom, so there was no way to really go up there. But kids are climbing everything, and so all of a sudden I turn around and I see the little girl. project and having gone so much from the past to the present, the past to the present, using memoirs to understand the present and that history to understand what I was looking at. Um, black and white does something different for us. It has a, also has a staying power. It has the feeling of, it also has a feeling of the past, but it also brings out the graphic and the elements differently than color does. Color adds another element of, of the language to the to the photography and I feel like in certain moments it was perfect to bring that in. You kind of feel like you're coming back out of a dream maybe and you're talking to people that are telling you the story. There's a picture of a man who's looking, who's sitting down on his, the floor of his home looking intensely kind of remembering. He's looking out the door and he's remembering from his childhood these things that had happened and he's telling his story, but he's telling the story of a lot of other people, too. In the desert in Syria, 
Um, I was with a friend of mine who was helping me. We were in a taxi going from Aleppo to Derzor. And as we went, these kind of orange dusts started to pick up. And everything turned this hazy orange and it was, it was kind of windy, but you just knew you were in the thick of this kind of sandstorm. Everything was tinted orange. And we went by the, for, you know, for miles and miles of absolutely nothing. It was just desert in the middle and you kind of imagined what it looked like for these people who had to march through this slowly and without water. And we were looking on the side of the road for where that river used to be. We passed this grove of trees and they were all slanted on their sides, almost diagonally, because the wind had just, you know, forced them over and over. It was relentless out there. It's really in the middle of nowhere, the most inhospitable um, environment I can imagine having to be in. One of, the, one of the things that really has captured me in this project is how a hundred years ago still lives today. It's just the evolution of what has happened, what it, how it has influenced society in Turkey today. It is political, but it's not. It's about suffering at a human level. It was March outside of Van, and snow had covered the entire landscape. And um, we were driving for miles and miles and miles. And I was photographing some outside the window too. And all of a sudden, we came up to this beautiful um, field. And we were passing these telephone wires, and I was shooting outside the window. And I took a frame, and I, I kind of knew because I. I saw in the frame what had happened instantaneously, but it, it happened so quickly. And I took the picture, and I looked later, and um, these two birds were perfectly framed kind of within the telephone pole and these wires with the dangling, with these kind of noose shapes. But the landscape was covered with snow, and there were these tracks. You could barely see them, but the tracks were leading off into kind of the right side of the frame. And I felt like there was this strange silence, something had happened. All of the symbols in that picture kind of came together for me. When I found um, this very small town in Anatolia, near um, north of Diyarbakir, called Achla, which in Turkish translates to the place of trees, in this village they had revived a silk weaving tradition based on the memory of the Armenians before them. And I found that to be such a beautiful way to remember They would climb up on top of the mulberry tree and hack down these huge branches filled with mulberry leaves. And then they would bundle them all up and carry them back to their houses and spread them out on the floor. And they would feed these to these rapidly growing silkworms on their floor. You would normally enter these houses and you would have the sofa and all these things, but this room was completely covered in silkworms. And I felt like, wow, this is like... <laughs> and there's this musty smell because these animals, of course, are in there for weeks. And so my sensories were kind of on overload and it was this sight that you just don't see normally in these homes. It only lasts for five or six weeks and then they make their cocoons. 